According to political scientist and economist Lorenzo Fioramonti, in contemporary governance, the gross domestic product, or GDP, is a benchmark by which the global pecking order is defined. Initially designed as a component of a nation's income, this number has become an all-powerful presence in our economic and political debate. GDP drives macroeconomic governmental policies and sets priorities in the social fields. Initially known as the gross national product, the first basic concept of GDP was invented at the end of the 18th century. The modern concept was developed by the American economist Simon Kuznets in 1934. Today, the GDP and GNP differ as gross national product measures income by nationality regardless of the physical location of a business. The GDP was adopted as the main measure of a country's economy at the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944. Kuznets would later receive a Nobel Prize for his research on growth and income distribution and presented his first report on the design of national income accounts to U.S. Congress. Born in Russia in 1901, Kuznets came to the United States in 1922 to join his father, who left Russia for the United States before World War I. He attended Columbia University, where he received his Ph.D. in 1926. Kuznets' work built on pioneering efforts by economists such as Colin Clark in the U.K. in the late 1920s, and was then followed by Richard Stone and James Mead in the 1940s, when GDP was introduced in Britain. All these economists have been influenced by John Maynard Keynes' approach to macroeconomic policy, particularly his belief that government had a proactive role to play in managing the business cycle and steering development. Since the early stages, Kuznets clarified that his version of national income was an attempt to measure market transactions rather than a comprehensive assessment of the overall production of an economic system. For instance, his measurement included payments as wages, salaries, dividends, and interest, but did not consider returns to individuals from their activity within the family system or from other pursuits that are not working for the market. In his first collection of national accounts, Kuznets noted that national income cannot include activities that have been explicitly recognized by society at large, overtly in the form of legal prohibition, not only as unproductive, but also as distinctly harmful, as well as activities that, while legal, represent largely shifts of income among individuals rather than additions to the command over goods. As a consequence, he excluded profits stemming from crimes such as theft, robbery, prostitution, and drug trafficking. At the same time, Kuznets was aware of the sometimes arbitrary demarcation between legality and illegality. For instance, the income of official casinos was included in the gross national product, while illegal gambling was not. Kuznets' ambition was to find ways to measure the economic welfare of a nation rather than simply quantifying output. In particular, he preferred excluding military expenses. At the time, Kuznets appeared increasingly out of tune with the political needs of a country that was about to embark on the Second World War. In the early 1940s, the U.S. government began to reveal hostility toward a measurement of national income that would provide a picture of economic output, but with expenditure on armaments categorized as costs. Other leading economists of the time, like Richard Stone, disagreed with Kuznets, arguing that common services such as defense, justice, education, and public health should be included in the consumption box. A full inclusion of military expenditure and gross national product appeared also in line with Keynes' views as reflected in the essay, How to Pay for War, which had explicitly linked national production and economic counting with modern approach to military planning. Thank you.